Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to talk about uh, wiring and electrical in its most ultimate simple terms. I'm here with Jim. I'm going to show you how to strip it and crimp them so that you can connect them together and to your appliances. And Jim, I'm going to turn this over to you and I'm going to get behind the camera and uh, try and zoom in and let people see this. Generally, the easiest way is to use a, a stripping tool for to start with. Uh, they, they can be extremely inexpensive. This one comes into a kit like this that has a bunch of different small type lugs in it. It, it ranges from 10 gauge all the way down to 22 gauge. Works pretty simply. Uh, let me, I'll strip some 10 gauge here. I know this is 10 gauge. I, I'm on my stripping tool. It, it's got the various sizes. I'll just stick that in the hole, squeeze, give it a quick twist, pull. There you go. It doesn't trim off any of the strands. It doesn't leave any of the covering. Makes it right, just ready to stick into a uh, lug and, and be crimped. When you, there are a number of different types. This is a, a stranded wire stripper. Some of this, this is a, the same thing as this one here. It's just a little high, higher quality. When you get into the really big stuff, if you don't have a, a stripping tool to do it, I just like to take my handy dandy wire cutters, put this around here, gently squeeze it, move it, squeeze it, move it, squeeze it, until I get all the way around. And, and peel off the, the wire. Again, some people use, just use a pocket knife. I, I find it easier to use a tool or the wire cutters. It's faster for me, it, it's easier. Um, now, now that we've got our 10 gauge stripped, you're going to want to crimp, if you want to crimp an end on it, there's a lot of different types of ends, blade ends, lugs, ring ends. Show us uh, if you got some examples there. Oh, I've got a lot of examples for you, Bob. This is a kit you can buy Walmart, Home Depot, auto parts store. It, it, it comes with a ton uh, of different basic gauges. Or, or lugs for gauges. This is a friend of mine's Marshalls. He, the, these are called clear nylons. They're they're a little higher quality. Same basic concept though. So the quality of your uh, of your lug can really make a difference. The the quality of your lug it can make a difference in the connection. Uh, people like to use pure copper lugs. Pure copper lugs tend to tarnish, so you have to go through and clean them. This is a tinned lug, which means under this, uh, what looks like aluminum color, is copper. It's just been tinned so that it won't tarnish. And even the yeah, even the the uh, nylon, the quality of the nylon makes a difference. That's right. The better quality equipment you buy and uh, parts, the better quality you're going to get in the long run. Um, and, and an easy uh, generalized way to say which one's better is if it's more, uh, oh, you can see through it. The more you can see through it, the higher the quality. It'll just give you a better connection. It won't tarnish over time. It, it, it's just, it, it's something for you to decide, but the higher quality lug is going to give you less voltage drop and a better connection. And we should say that for people who are a little confused by that, if you just go to a Napa and you go to the counter and say, hey, I'd like to buy a little better quality lug, uh, 6 gauge, 8, 8, 10, 12, whatever you need, 
he'd be glad to go and show you the which one is a little better and is a little more money. I mean, it's yep. you win, he wins. So when when you when you look at them on the shelf, you're you're going to see inexpensive stuff like this. Ten gauge is a very popular gauge for small stuff, and and, and you're going to see this package. It cost X amount of dollars. This package for the same thing, for the same size, is just going to cost you more. That, right. That's all there is to it. Quality costs a little more. Well, yeah, and uh, in, in the long run, if uh, you're you're keeping more of your power or you're having to replace them less often, it, it's actually quality costs you less. Well, and and taking it to an extreme. Uh, lower quality can cause more heat. A bad connection can cause more heat. That's right. And you get some tarnish going on, and ultimately heat can cause fire. That's right. Well, I mean, that's and extreme and unlikely. Uh, a bad connection causes heat. Um, as it heats up, it creates more resistance. The more resistance you have, the higher the heat gets. It plays off of each other and, until eventually it fails. It could just melt down and disconnect. It could start a fire if it's in uh, the right conditions. Um, and let's add, that's where fusing comes in, and we're going to talk about fusing next. That's that's right, because uh, fusing protects your wire. Not exactly your appliance. It protects the wire from burning up. And your life. And your life. So if, if you start having heat and resistance, actually you would start having resistance then heat, then more resistance, then more heat, and eventually your fuse is going to pop because there's just too much resistance there. It's taking too much power to push the, the electricity through the line. So always a little better to go slightly too big a gauge, better quality wiring, and better quality connectors. That's right. And, and it's also important, <clears throat> here's a bus bar. If you have a a loop that's this size and you put it on there, it's not going to give you a very good connection. The proper size loop will actually fit and the whole loop becomes part of the connection. Right. You, you can make up the difference with washers, but it, it's still better. Get the, the right size for what you need. Um, a, a bigger size wire is good. A bigger size hole on your loop is not. Right. And, you know, we're talking about extremes. I mean, it's just because you use too big a loop doesn't mean you're going to have a fire and you're going to die. It's just one more corner you've cut and too many corners can add up. That's right. It's, uh, and if you're cutting corners on one spot, you're probably cutting corners on another spot. And pretty soon they, they're going to get you. Yeah. And so if you just make it a policy with, with, with electrical, do everything right. Do it a little better than right. That's right. A little better than you absolutely have to, you'll be okay. Yep. And and a lot of times when you wire something up, you're, you're wiring it up with a certain load in mind. And down the road, you decide to add more to that load. Uh, going a little bigger in your wire size is going to give you that expansion room. Some forgiveness. Yeah. So, I, I'm going to want to, I'm just going to crimp this cheap lug on to this wire. Because we're throwing it away. Yeah. And it's going to go in here. This is my least expensive set of crimp tool. Again, the numbers are right here on the, the tool. It tells me what size to use. I'm going to come in here. Just squeeze. Now, give it a pull. Good pull. That's not coming back off. Right. Well, here, I can use this. That's not coming That's off. That's not coming off. That's what you want to see. And, and this is with a, an inexpensive everyday uh, lug. Your higher quality lugs, um, they're, they're going to grip just as well. They're, there's higher quality crimp tools. I, I, for my, my really big stuff, one aughts and stuff like that, I actually use a 16 ton hydraulic. I don't have it out here because most people aren't going to go to that length. But the quality of your crimp 
plays along with the quality of your wire, plays along with the quality of your lugs or your connection. All of it, quality is really important in electrical. It, it, gets, it allows you to use all of your electrical, it allows you not to have voltage drop, heat buildup, uh, failures. A good tight crimp is going to make a good tight seal, going to pass the electricity. You, you can solder. Uh, for mobile situations, I don't like solder because they vibrate, the solder breaks, eventually uh, corrosion gets into them. I, I prefer to use lugs and crimping. Um, your, your own preference and, and your own abilities come into play, but th this is what I do. Um, the last thing, now this has a, a little nylon insert on it. Uh, I actually prefer to protect it. I think that's. I'm going to put this around here. A lot of different ways to do this. I just use a little bit lighter, and we're going to shrink this down. So this is kind of like a shrink wrap. These are shrink wraps. They come in different sizes. The wind's making it kind of hard to do here. But you can see how the the plastic, the rubber is, is shrinking down and it's going to seal the ends. It's going to keep it from corrosion from getting in there. And, and like we said, corrosion is one of your enemies. Maybe. It causes heat. Yeah, I have a variety of ways of doing this, including a micro torch heat guns, uh, it just depends on what I'm doing. But you can see on this end, it's it's shrunk right down to the end of the wire. It, it's gonna make a nice tight seal. It also keeps this area in here from shorting out. This goes into the connector. This end down here won't touch anything and short out. So there, that's a, a strip the wire Put the lug on, crimp it down, seal it with heat shrink. It, it's a lot better than just wrapping it around the, the lug and tightening the nut. Of course, you can use uh, electrical tape. So you could just wrap it with electrical tape. I have some really thick electrical tape here, and we'll. And again, the quality of your electrical tape makes a really big difference. It makes a huge difference. I mean, you, you can buy electrical tape at the dollar store and you, you, you put it on and, and five minutes later it seems like it's running rolling right back off right. at you. It's terrible. I tend to use the really thick stuff because I tend to use really thick wire in my installs. Yeah, if, if you want to you want to err on the side of too big a wire. That's right. And, and too well done. So again, it, it's sealed down here at the wire end, it's sealed up here at the lug end. It's a good connection. If you want, you can buy various colors of, of tape. You can buy various colors of shrink wrap so that it's nice and pretty. And this is your red positive side. And and the other one has black negative sides. You can color code them so you know when, when you get into your cabinet, you know that these two yellow ones over here are, are from your, uh, your, your inverter. These two come from your battery. Uh, it's all choices for you. Um, it is good to label your wires so that you know what's going on. In, in this situation, these different colors mean different wire sizes. The blue ones are 16 to 14, yellow 10 to 12. I always want to use the right size lug for your, for your connection. If you use this 1-aught lug on a 12-aught wire, it's not going to crimp down to the point that it actually grabs a wire. I, I don't care if you use a 16-ton crimp tool. It's just not going to happen. It's going to be a terrible connection if you force it. There are uh, other ways of crimping. There's hammer crimpers. There's uh, you, you can just take a pair of pliers and squeeze them down if you want. I, I've never found them to be as good as actually using a crimp tool. We also might mention that you can uh, buy wires pre-crimped, especially the bigger wires, because it's it's a specialty to, to crimp a big wire. 
if you're not crimping a bunch of wires all the time it might be cheaper and easier just to buy uh, pre-made wires that you can tell them I need this, this length, this uh, gauge, uh, this size lug and hole. I think they charge a dollar uh, uh, crimp or term, uh, uh, the terminals and uh, they'll, they'll sell you a very high quality wire with a very high quality lug and a very well done crimp and shrink wrapped afterwards. All you'll have to do is bolt it onto your parts. We might also add that if you're coming to Quartzite, uh, Discount Solar will make you your, uh, you walk in, say I need, tell them exactly what you need and they'll make it right there for you and hand it to you. So. Well, and that's, that, that's the, the whole point. I, I help a lot of people. I, I design solar and so I, I have the equipment and the wires and the lugs and, and the things necessary to do all this. If you're doing one job, it's a lot of equipment to buy and, and store when you may never use it again. Well, speaking of that, you, you uh, are actually doing design work for a hire. That's right. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, how we can contact you? You can email me at jim at jimindenver.com and uh, we'll sit down, find out what your needs are, find out the best way to fulfill them and, and work you up a, a design and find out what parts you need and, and the whole works. and. Simple installations I can help you with. Bigger installations we have people to send you to. One way or the other, there's there's a right way to do it. And uh, you, you just don't want to cut corners for any reasons. Right. So thanks, Jim, so much for sharing your uh, knowledge and experience with us again. It just, you know, it's just so good to have someone that really knows what he's talking about, telling us, leading us through these things. So folks, I hope you got something out of this. I uh, hope maybe even saved your life or the life of one of your friends. If you see a friend cutting the corners, you might mention it. You know, that's you're cutting a corner there and maybe just do a, a, a little more time, a, a very little more money, and it can save your life. So there you have it. I hope you ha this helped you. If it did, like us on uh, YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.